we're going to explain standard de deviation and we're going to use an example to help us understand it. Let's say we have two classrooms, Mrs. Joe's class with 20 students and Mr. Bob's class with 30 students. And we're going to compare the two by getting them to do a maths test. And let's say in this test is worth out of 20 marks and Mrs. Joe, in Mrs. Joe's class, five students got 10 out of 20, so they just passed. Three students got 11, three students got 9, two students got 8, two students got 12, one got 13, one got 7, one only got 2 marks, one got 14 and one got 18. And if we look at here where we've got the 12, the students have got 12. And we look at the students that got 8. You'll notice between these two marks you've got a large portion of your class and their marks. In fact, I'll tell you right now there's at least 68% of the data between these two lines. And when you calculate a standard deviation, you're actually trying to find out where 68% of the data is. And let's put the mean in here. The mean is about 10. That's our halfway mark. And if you look at how far the 8 is from the 10 and the 12 is from the 10, they're both 2 on either side. So we have a standard deviation of 2, meaning if we go 2 on each side of the mean, we will get about 68% of our data. So let's now do Mr. Bob's class. And let's say rather than 30 students taking the test, only 20 did. Maybe 10 were away or um, Mrs. Joe said she only wanted 20 students to be taken in the test to match the number in her class. And let's say each student got a mark from 1 to 20. So one student got 1, one student got 2, one student got 3, 4, 5, all the way to 20. And you can see it's... Uh, quite a spread here. Now if you're wanting to see where 68% of the data is, you'd have to look from about where the 3 is to the 17. And between these two intervals you have about 68% of the student scores. So our mean again is, is going to be 10, about 10 anyway. And if you look on each side it's 7 apart. So we've got a standard deviation of 7. What we can gather from this data is that Mr. Bob's class is very spaced apart and Mrs. Joe's class is very close together. And you can tell by the standard deviation. If the standard deviation is really small, your data will be close together. If the standard de deviation is large, your data will be very spread out. Mrs. Joe's class is an example of marks being consistent consistent meaning that everyone's marks are very similar in the test. Now I want to move on to two definitions, population and sample. Population means that everyone was tested. For instance, in Mrs. Joe's class, she has 20 students and every single one did the test. So that's it. So she used the population of her class. Mr. Bob only used a sample of his class. Sample means if you have 30 students and you use 20 of them, so meaning you're not using the whole class. Okay, we're going to learn how to calculate the standard deviation and to do this we first need to understand there are two types. We have population standard deviation and sample standard deviation. And the symbol for the population standard deviation is sigma n or on your calculator it's sigma x so for some reason the calculator has a different symbol to the norm the sample standard deviation has a symbol of sigma n minus 1 or on the calculator for some reason they write it as sx and if you look above the 5 and 6 in green you'll see these symbols on your calculator Alright, let's look at the question 
the cricket selectors are trying to choose between two pairs of indoor cricket batsmen for the state team. Two sample sets of results for the pairs of batmen, batsmen in runs are there in the table. It wants you to calculate the mean and the sample standard deviation of each pair's scores. So to calculate the mean, well, first of all, we need to enter these scores. So looking at pair A, we're going to type in. Oh, actually, wait. Let's let's clear our calculator. So press the yellow second function button and the green alpha button, and you'll see reset number one. Let's push number one, then equals. Now what you've done is you've cleared your calculator, making sure there's no other data that's stored inside of it. So we're going to get into statistics mode by pressing mode, statistics number one, and standard deviation number zero. Okay, so let's enter this data. In pair A we have the number 34, and then go M plus, then 30, M plus, 36, M plus, 35, M plus, 29, M plus, 34, M plus. Now the red on clear button, we can push that, and it, the calculator still remembers all those numbers you put in there. So to find the mean, we need to look for X bar. And X bar is above the 4 in green. So let's push alpha 4 equals. And you will get X bar equals 33, meaning we have a mean of 33. Now let's find the standard deviation. It does want the sample standard deviation, which is our SX button. So let's press, let's press first the on clear button and go alpha 5 equals and you will get a standard deviation of 2.8. Okay, now we're going to move on to pair B, but before we can do this we need to clear the whole calculator by pressing second F alpha reset number 1 equals. Okay, because we're entering new data and we don't want that old data to stay in there, so we have to clear the whole calculator. So let's get into statistics mode. Mode number one for statistics, standard deviation number zero equals, oh no, don't have to equal, sorry. Let's place the red on clear button. Um, so let's put our numbers in. We've got 41 M plus, 26 M plus, 37 M plus, 35 M plus, 25 M plus, 34 M plus. And let's do the on clear button in red because it will remember it anyway. And let's find the mean. And we're going to go alpha 4 equals. So we have a mean of 33, same as last time. Let's press the on clear button. And let's do alpha 5 equals. And our standard deviation. is going to be 6.3. Okay, now we've answered that question. Let's just have a quick look at it. Just imagine you're a cricket selector and you're trying to figure out, am I going to pick the cricketer A or cricketer B? And I'll, you might notice that both batters have a mean score of 33, which means that every time they go out to bat, they get about 33 runs. So if they've both got the same average, you might think, oh, well, they're both just as good as each other. But batter A is actually more consistent because notice how the standard deviation is really small. And what that means is that he's got, his scores are always close to 33. They don't veer off too much. While batter B has a standard deviation of 6.3, so you're going to have a lot more to the right and left of his score. So rather than, you'll notice like pair B, like batter B, sometimes it gets 25 and 26, which is a lot lower than 33.